and they are doubtless innocent and happy creatures, notwithstanding that some of their amusements would put ill comport with our terrestrial notions of decorum. Long story oh. short, they watched Moonbat people 69 each other out in the open and yeah. found it rather quaint. Oh, <laughs> oh, they're kink shaming the Moonbat people? Oh, Hello, everybody, and welcome to 500 oh. Open Tabs. <laughs> I tricked you. You did. Okay. I'm, your, uh, I'm Kav Taharian. <laughs> and I'm Anna Hillam. Was that the welcome intro? Welcome back to our show. That's going to be the intro for this week because we were just, we were overthinking it as we always do. We really were. You're right. I'm glad you pressed record. Yeah. Sometimes in welcome life, back. you got to just hit record and see what happens and then lose all of your dozens of followers because people are like why do they make such a word what did you say word salad we word salad it too much word salad yeah yeah i like salads i'm trying to watch my slim figure anyway don't unfollow (laughs) us please speaking of following us you should follow our discord because that's where we talk even more i do hannah forgets that we have a discord occasionally just outing me huh yep it's like (laughs) it's like i thought we were friends (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I do. I do occasionally forget about the Discord, but I also forget uh, most things. So yeah, to be fair, that's not a reflection of Hannah's thoughts about the Discord. Hannah no. forgets that we have a podcast, or that we're going to record anything, yeah, or I've that we like... had planned something months in advance. So it's not. Yeah. That's just par for the course. It's me. I got some yeah. sort of early onset something. We'll see. We'll see how it pans out. It's charming, uh... thankfully, so people won't really <laughs> notice it as a problem until it's too late. <laughs> for now. That's why you got to make fun of yourself so everyone forgives you when you mess up. That's the, true. The That's key. the fundamental lesson of my childhood. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. Discord. Discord is cool. Tell your friends. We're saying all this up front because by the end of the podcast, you guys are probably all too tired. But yes, tell everybody about it. Also, yeah. I don't remember if we mentioned this in the last episode. I think we did. So we, we're going to be we at did. San Diego Comic Con in a couple of weeks. Um, by the time this airs, we found out recently that we're going to be doing a panel, yes. which is exciting. very exciting. It's going to be so an in person thing. And listen to us. Talk you can about listen something. to us IRL in real life. <laughs> if I remember. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be like, what? We have a panel? Where am I supposed to be? <laughs> uh, 100% also, going to happen. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. It's going to be like an hour before I'll be like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Also, we have a Patreon. So if you want to offer support in that way, that'd be great. We're going to start posting stuff there soon. But for now, it's yes. simply to help us pay for our editor. And uh, various monthly payments to like monthly payments and fun things. stuff that we're going to hopefully reveal by yeah. the time Comic Con rolls around. Anyway, that's a pretty good intro, right? I think yeah, that's enough that's of good. a of a blurb, so we can sort of get no into it. No one cares it. how um, we're doing because they no know. One, I, listen, it's fine. They know. They know. Not well. No, who's doing Not well great. right now? Nobody. <laughs> a lot the of people falling seem apart. to be. <laughs> okay, uh, right. so I believe last week uh, I was the one who started part one of the Great Moon yep. Hoax. Is that correct? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm excited for this. Um, I'm excited for this too. Um, If you didn't listen to last week's episode, you're going to want to go ahead and do that because this tab won't make any sense without knowing the context. But honestly, even then, if you did listen to it, (laughs) this tab (laughs) may still not make a lot of sense because it's very insane and weird, but I digress. So quick recap. Which you sadly can't choose to skip because this is not Netflix or a television show. Uh, In 1835, the New York Sun published a six-part series written by Richard Adams Locke, pretending to be a scientist named Dr. Andrew Grant, who did not exist, as he followed Sir John Herschel, who did exist, on his journey to Cape Town, which did happen, to set up a fancy new telescope which, and claim to see life on the moon, which as you may have guessed by now, did not actually happen. So you got all that? There's a real guy. Depends on what you believe. (laughs) There's a real guy pretending to be a fake guy who followed a real guy on a real journey who saw things that were not real on the moon and seen. That was beautiful. Um, Thank you. In the first, yeah. (laughs) One more time, but with more emotion and intensity. Can we just do it one more time? (laughs) Yeah. Real guy, fake guy, real guy, real trip, fake events. Boom. Great. Um, so in the first three parts of the series, he described like a bunch of trees and craters and oceans and crap. And he also straw, saw straight up beaver people that walked on two legs and, and lived in tall flaps. huts. Didn't they yeah, have like the, flesh, 
flesh bangs. Mer- the flesh flaps. I forgot about that. Or was it the the unicorns that had that? I don't remember. I've blocked they it out, all, frankly. What? They That's all right. They all did flaps. have the flesh flaps. That's right. All I've been thinking about is the are those flesh flaps. <laughs> it's been two weeks. <laughs> you were yeah, you were out of town, so we didn't actually get to record on the usual um schedule that we do. So I've forgotten some of this stuff. But thank you. I'm glad that you remembered flesh flaps. <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> and frankly, how could you forget? I don't know. Just like you forgot the Discord. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so flesh flap oh. beaver people who walked on two legs and lived in huts and had learned to harness the power of fire. <laughs> also, there were unicorns. Wow. But the tease I left at the end of the last episode was the main event, which began on day four, which are the moon bat people, which That's is where right. I will pick up the story today. All right. So... <laughs> Day four, they're searching far and wide. They've seen all that other stuff. And then Dr. Grant and Sir Herschel finally discover human-like creatures living inside of a ring of red hills that they dubbed, quote, the Ruby Coliseum, which is kind okay. of a nice name. That's not that's not bad. Yeah. Um, so the Vesperatilio Homo, uh, they were described as being four feet tall and covered, except on the face, with short and glossy copper-colored hair and had wings composed of a thin membrane without hair lying oh. snugly upon their backs. Oh, that sounds cozy. Uh, their faces <laughs> yeah. of a yellowish flesh color was a slight Sick. improvement upon that of the large orangutan. I don't know what's with the shade being thrown at orangutans because I love orangutans. Huge fan, by the way. Oh, yeah. Also, I've talked quite a bit about Planet of the Apes to everybody around yeah. me over the past two months because of the new yeah. movie. I love Maurice is like one of my favorites. I'm assuming you have not seen any of the mm. last few movies. Uh-uh. The part that's relevant to you that you would love is Maurice is the big orangutan who's like the chill, smart one who's like really nice. He's oh. like the philosopher of it. Uh, at one point when they're trying to like be friends with the humans again in the second one, there's a kid and the kid has, I think it's Black Holes, the graphic novel. Oh. Um, and, then, and then Maurice is like, that's cool. What's that? I want to read that. So it's canon. <laughs> that orangutan in that story loves graphic novels, so he's one of us. <laughs> he's one of us. <laughs> yep. He would be happy. Like at- Here's the thing. I respect orangutans, but I'm scared of them. Um, yeah. They're solitary creatures, actually. They're really like, they're yeah, very chill. I respect yeah. them. Yeah. They're good. They're, I don't want to be near one. I want to be near one. I don't think they want me to be near them. No. But that's just, that's people in general. But anyway, I move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> A little bit of orangutan shade, which I don't approve of, but moving on. That's the least of the problematic things from this. (laughs) And that's the least of the problematic things I'm going to say today. Okay, good. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I I don't know what. I don't plan ahead. Yeah, you never do. Um, Moving forward, the hair on the head was a darker color than that of the body. And Hmm. speaking of problematic, closely curled, but apparently not woolly and arranged in two semi-curious semicircles over the temple of the forehead. Okay. Uh, Quote, we scientifically denominated them as Vesperatilio homo or man bat, and they are doubtless innocent and happy creatures, notwithstanding that some of their amusements would put ill comport with our terrestrial notions of decorum. Long story oh. short, they watched moon bat people 69 each other out in the open and yeah. found it rather quaint. Oh, <laughs> oh, they're king shaming the moon bat people? It's a little bit deeper than that, I think. Um, mm. And I'm going to I'm gonna sort of unpack a little bit of this in terms of what okay. I think. Some It's going to get crazier and it'll sort of make Good. sense in context. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> okay. this is how <laughs> some of this ends up being how you say, as the French would say, problematique. But oh. that's sort of the point, <laughs> oh, arguably. No. Okay. Anyway, uh, knowing that this was perhaps too insane, Dr. Grant, again, fake Dr. Grant, assured skeptics yeah. that a forthcoming volume would provide certificates from several Episcopal, Wesleyan, and other ministers who in the month of March last were permitted under stipulation of temporary secrecy to visit the observatory and become eyewitnesses of the wonders which they requested to attest. God, I hate this writing so much. It is uh, too much. It's so annoying. Speaking of word salad, basically he's like, bro, don't worry. A bunch of priests and shit saw this and they're going to validate this in like <laughs> six months from now. So just trust me for now. Doesn't that like, come, like, cool. like go against everything like the churches believe? Like if there's moon people. Anyway, go on. I'm getting uh, no, too deep so, into like theology. No, no, no. But but that's what I'm saying. So that that's part of it. Is remember I, okay. I said this in the last part um, that the theology. I mean, I guess the contradiction in terms was like if God has made these, you know, planets and and the moon and all this, of course they would have 
creatures that lived on there that, you know, loved God and, and worshiped right. him and, and said that like, do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's this, Yeah. I, I don't know enough about the Bible to know if space is, to, I don't think they talk about space in the Bible, do they? No. No. But it's like an extrapolation, which was, you know, uh, coming up at the same time as these astronomers were. So a lot of astronomy right. was also closely related to, you know, religious theology and, uh, and all that business. Yeah. And I think at the I'm time people were really into planets and how that fit into religion. Because there was a lot of writings yeah. at the time of that. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, these are God-fearing, 69-ing uh, <laughs> moon bat people. I don't know if they quite feared <laughs> God yet. And, that, and again, I'll get into all of this. Okay, go continue. Sixty okay. nineing bat people. That's day four. That was the big. <laughs> Trying not to disrupt. It's okay. I'm disrupting myself. That was the main event of day four. So then day five. This is okay. when it. Get, this is when it gets really crazy and weird. Oh. So by this point, Locke seemed to run out of ideas, and he starts to go full on occult. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I'm, and, I'm here. Uh, on day five, they discover the Sapphire Temple which oh. is a giant 70-foot monument with a roof constructed out of a yellow metal and fashioned to look like the mass of flames rising upwards and licking at a large sphere of clouded copper. And cool. look, I know I always say this as my punchline, but legitimately, literally, without joking, this thing looks like a monument to like uh, the Twin Towers being on fire, but like one of them. <laughs> so I'm going to text you the image <laughs> so you can see it. I would have said this regard. It literally just looks like a tower that's on yeah. fire. I can't there believe the moon... I can't believe the moon also had 9-11. Oh, wow. It look totally at that. had 9 Right? That it's looks, lunar 9-11. That's lunar 9-11. <laughs> yes. How <laughs> dare they? Is that, how dare they? Look at that. <gasps> you know what that means in our lore? What? Billy that Bob was that, on the moon? No, Peter Stump. Peter Stump was the one oh. who did 9-11, remember? Peter Stump, the werewolf right. who famously was blamed for everything. He visited the and moon at some point. Since he's immortal, he was yeah. there. He burned down the one tower. Or maybe there was two and he burned <laughs> the other one down. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that I stand firmly against the terrorist who took down, who was behind <laughs> Lunar 9-11. All right? That's why Osama platform bin I'm running Lunar, I don't know. What <laughs> 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 Osama the bin wealthy Lunar? Bin Laden moon family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at it again. So, yeah, that, that was a thing that they just saw. And <laughs> they went full on like history channel. And they're like, was there an alien apocalypse? Are there moon Mayans? Did like Lunarian George Bush do 9-11? We don't know. <laughs> He's just like asking all these questions because that's what they're always doing. Right. I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking. Look, I'm just asking questions. Just asking questions. I don't understand what this 9-11 thing was. Uh, there's that. And then on the final <laughs> day, which is day six, this is where it all takes it over the edge. Last chapter. Oh, this is where, yeah? This is where This is where he brings it all together. Okay. Like a good storyteller does. Last chapter, mm. he's like, oh, I wonder, who, you know, because the day before you saw the temple and then the last day, he's like, I wonder who built this temple. I don't know. Like, there's all these mysteries. Like, the beavers were, you know, they have fire, but it doesn't look like they knew how to build you know, the Twin Towers and then like the 69ing bat people were probably too busy 69ing to build yeah. anything. They're like, this yeah. doesn't add up. There must be something else. And then this is my favorite. He literally just like takes the the telescope and goes over like like three feet. And he's like, oh, OK, I guess. Whoop, shit. Like a half mile over. There's more bat people. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. Were they also what were they doing? But these bat people were different. Oh, uh-oh. Yep. Oh, no. Get ready. And I quote. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. You know you know where it's going. A hundred percent. I know where this is going. Quote, we found that nearly all the individuals in these groups were of larger stature than the former specimens, huh. less dark in color, and in oh. every respect, an improved variety of the race. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we all knew Are where you... this was going. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> uh, why was it so hard for people to be like like they even like projected this onto the moon they're like there's no way that those moon yeah, people it... <laughs> could have built that we gotta find some white moon people that are yeah, better exactly. at building white moon people <laughs> like... are the ones who did this <laughs> oh no every uh, and, story and, and... that we tell from this time period always ends up with as this and then racism racism um, as opposed to now where it's totally gone and fixed. Yeah, uh, it's all gone. 
It's all gone. Uh, but I'll, again, I'll unpack this. I'll go into more of this just to finish out the story. Then he goes on to talk about, and this is real, how classy they all were and how they possessed oh. the most beautiful of all the quadrupeds, a flat white sag <laughs> with lofty spreading ant- antlers, black as ebony, and then they rode them. So basically, they're also into horses, which, as we all know, somebody yeah. like him would love. Yeah. So they're like, cool. They built buildings and have white horses. They're awesome. And then he goes on to tell the story of how cool it was to see them. And then that night, this is my favorite part. They were putting the telescope away like usual, but someone placed it weird. And the next morning, the sunlight shined into it and caused a fire. And everybody was like, oh, shit, no. And then they fixed it. They stopped the fire and they fixed it. But they're like, yeah, whatever. Okay, you're just gonna have to wait for Herschel's book anyway, since we've given away enough. And then that becomes the end of the day six of the story. Wow. The end. So they were like, sorry, we have no proof. We burned it down. Is that what that was about? No, no, no. They're basically saying like oh, we had okay. to stop looking through. It basically, he was like, I, right. I've already. He's like, this. We had to take a break after this, uh, and like regroup <laughs> and build, and then we had to, you know, whatever. He's like, but it's fine. He's like, there's again, just like the priests are going to come validate all the stuff that we saw. There's going to be oh. a proper book that Herschel will explain everything. This is just like a sneak preview. And just to remind everyone, the, he is writing these into the newspaper, correct? Yeah, so in the in the New York Sun, he's doing it as five right. or six installments over the course of six day days. Day by day. And, okay. Yeah, day by day. And so right off the bat, waiting for the applause to come in, but anyway, pun intended. Uh, the story, bad I'm people. Th- <laughs> oh! I'm ashamed <laughs> of myself. You. It's okay. No need for A shame. A lot goes uh, over but, my head. Uh, the story was huge right off the bat. People yeah. were like obsessed. And I couldn't totally confirm this. And I, I can't remember if I said this last week or not, but I'll just reiterate it. But uh, this, The Sun was the first paper to employ newsies. Did we talk about this last time? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, okay. So the whole like extra, extra, read all about it, so on and so forth. Like kids oh, on, the yeah. news, on the corner, like selling newspapers. Apparently, The Sun was the first paper to do this. Oh. So um, you got Christian Bale out there being like, man on the moon. Dancing Batman. around. Yeah. Batman, <laughs> Batman, we need to unionize. Wait. <laughs> I just made some connections in my head that don't make make any sense. Go on. Yeah. Uh, All these bad people, their parents got murdered when they were in a dark alleyway after they went to the opera Uh and they became billionaires and started to Uh protect the city of Moon Gotham from everything. Anyway, I'm just rambling. Yeah. Um, But I I thought that was really interesting. So they're the first ones to push, you know, marketing to that extent where it's literally on the street corner and people are buying papers and being like, what? And then they take it from the kid and read it and blah, blah, blah. Wow. So the combination of the sun's high circulation and the newsies meant that everyone throughout the city, spending all social classes, heard about the lunar discoveries at the same time. And they experienced wow. it as a shared social event in a way that was entirely <laughs> new. And it was it's this is probably, at least in this country, the first time that something went viral like in a city. Whoa. OK. Which is crazy yeah, to think it about. It makes sense. Um, you don't think about it now in terms of, you know, the Internet and like everything's so bifurcated and whatever. It's so many different avenues and and uh, right. echo chambers that you're at. But like everybody was reading about it. Everybody was talking about it. The, monoculture. And again, also, One event. Monoculture. And then also like it's the beginning of the of the penny press. And also. Oh, right. It's these articles that are being written. People were like, yeah, I don't know. It's just like this paper. I just read this thing and it was cool. Like there's some real articles in here, but there's also some other stuff. And it kind of reaffirms this thing I want to believe. So everyone's like, yeah, hell yeah, this is awesome. So people got like really riled up about it. They were like, yeah, this is awesome. There's moon people. Did you hear? (laughs) And And at the time. (laughs) Bang each other. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. All the 69 and bat people. I'm still hung up on the fact that they're just up there. Anyway, go on. What else are you supposed to do on the moon? I mean, build a tower to burn down. I don't know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Obviously building towers. And like, What do you do at the pro- end of building a like, tower? You got to relax. Yeah, that's true. The sun made false claims <laughs> that their sales had like uh, essentially doubled. <clears throat> but this seems <laughs> unlikely. And because this is true, because after the first couple of entries, a bunch of other papers in New York got wind of its popularity and started to collect and reprint them in a recap. Oh, so, you know Smart. those like terrible videos of people where they're like, "Oh, I'm watching someone else's video and reacting to it." <laughs> Th- they are doing the 1835 equivalent of that. We've always done this. Yes, we've already we've always done this, and this was the first version of that. Or like like a when someone would RT a, a thread on Twitter where they're like, "Read yeah. this thread," and then they have their comment. This is what all the other papers were doing day by day, and so it kept spreading uh, further and further. And uh, within a week, close to 100,000 copies of the lunar narrative had been printed at a time when New York City had only a population of 300,000. So that means a third of the city of New York 
had gotten a copy of this story. <laughs> like that's wildfire, insane. this shit spreading. Yeah. Like every adult. That's what that's Every like. adult has read it. And the Sun surely had lost money from what they did, but they did make a large profit by selling the complete text of the Lunar Discoveries as a special edition pamphlet mm. that he put on sale on August 31st. So basically like a comic book omnibus, you know, where they collect all the stories into one thing. It's, they essentially yeah. did that. And it also sold various lithographic prints showing fanciful scenes of Herschel's lunar discovery, such as the lunar animals in the Ruby Coliseum. And they commissioned the production of these prints from the Wall Street lithographers Norris and Baker, which I couldn't find much information about. But I just thought shout out to artists yeah. who are doing other art Credit stuff. Credit the artist. So there's all kinds of random stuff. And again, I'll, I'll go into it more in terms of like its spread. But there is a okay. lot of cool, crazy artwork about this. So let me see. This one, I think, is from the lithograph. There's this one. Uh, and, and it keeps going, by the way. Whoa. Oh, wow. Oh, my and there's some beautiful pieces. Yeah. Which this... for whoever's reading the yeah. YouTube, who's watching the YouTube, you'll see all these on the screen. Oh, cool. Look at those. Dude, I've... <laughs> oh, whoa. They're flying in. Oh, ew. Yeah, why don't you, why don't you describe it to people I, who are listening? I, these bat people are like, flying around and their legs are i don't know i don't like what they look like they make me uncomfortable <laughs> did you think bat people were supposed to feel less weird less bat like but um less bat like <laughs> but yeah there's this dude is that a dude i don't know wow they're yeah they're flying around look like they're talking to each other they're like conversing on the beach they're sitting there telling each other stories they're swimming there's a bunch of birds Oh, That's I got. So I grabbed this one for you. This one's a liter uh, allegedly done by a Welsh artist. Is the last one I saw. Uh, oh, oh, oh! It's a bad baby. Oh, there's the beaver beaver people. Ooh. Yeah. So there's you the, know beaver, what? the beaver people. Yeah. Go ahead. Those beavers look like werewolves. They do look like werewolves. Which yeah. again, Peter Stump, werewolf, went to the moon. That's what I'm saying. He might have been responsible. There might be Peter Wolf genetics here somewhere at play. I mean, these are gorgeous. I'm sorry, Peter Stump, course. not Peter Wolf. These Peter are really, stuff. really, really pretty illustrations. I like them a lot. They're really cool. Uh, also, let's see. Because here's what's blowing my mind Go right ahead. now is that like, yeah. you see this kind of style and you're like, oh yeah, that's like from the 1800s and you expect it to be like, oh, here's a politician or here's like a, a scene of like country life. But instead it's these people that are covered in hair and have wings. <laughs> they're just doing regular people stuff except they, they're bat people and it's on the moon. It's awesome. It's like this weird like juxtaposition for me that's like blowing my mind a little bit <laughs> it's like well, i knew you'd why? love it i do i want i want i want a tattoo of one of these bat people anyway so this let's see so there's some debate about the validity essentially amongst the public but most <laughs> yeah. people were like fully into it really and yeah so so <laughs> wow th this is this is where it gets kind of tough to figure out like what exactly is what and how much of this is true and how much of this is. So yeah. I, there, there's like a big, um, God, what was the website? The website I was looking at was hoaxes.org that, that did a really good, really long deep dive into this. Uh, Ooh, and they okay. sort of unpack each part like one by one in terms of, you know, accounts that were written at the time, accounts that were written like 15 years later. And then there's sort of the different incentives that people might have had to take a certain tone. Yeah. I won't go into all of it because it gets really long and complicated. But essentially, some people are saying that like it's overblown and that like the people who were refuting it were there was more of a like a refuting in, in the public space, but people just didn't care. Other people were saying that like, no, everybody was into it and no one said anything. Anyway, it's very complicated. Right. But Long it's story short, the same as us today, where like a lot of people, you know, it was complicated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, and, and that's that's what I think is so interesting about the story is that it has a lot of parallels to today. But so there are a few funny stories, which is missionaries started to raise money to go to the moon and convert the heathens. <laughs> <laughs> of course. The first thing they do is try to make them Christian. <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, apparently somebody, I think some, one of the, some priests or something was like getting Bibles sent to him and people were like, can you send this to the moon to go to them as well? <laughs> oh, insane. But it wasn't just the religious people. Yale was alive with staunch supporters. Students, professors, doctors in divinity and law and all the rest of the reading community looked daily for the arrival of the New York Mail with excitement and implicit faith. Like academics. Academics. And again, because remember, it's written in this awful, disgusting, I want to rip my teeth out of my mouth <laughs> style. That is the worst. It's it's so awful. But it's just like it's word salad. Terrible. Again, word salad. And I can say this as a person who has gone 
through the higher education system, uh-huh. oh, they will eat this shit up. This is exactly really? how you write like a 25 like page this? paper. Ugh. The more obnoxious it is and like, oh, they referenced like the teacher who teaches the class. I literally got doc points on papers that I wrote because I didn't reference the teacher themselves. I was like, oh. eat shit. I hate all of you. Anyway, um, that's another <laughs> complaint for another time. But yes, I could totally yeah. see all the snobs of Yale in 1835 being like, oh, Ooh. how interesting. Blah, 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 blah. All these big words must mean there's people on the moon. Basically, they're all dumb and they don't know what it is. But they're like, well, it's bigger words than I would use. So he's probably got to be telling the truth. <laughs> And so okay. it, it, it divided a lot of people, though. So, like, people were getting into fist fights at Thanksgiving about it. What? This was oh, the first, not was literally. Real. Yeah. Oh, man, uh, I wanted to, to, to hear about that. I can't prove their, that it didn't happen. Their weird uncle comes and he's like, did you hear about the moon people? Yeah. And you get in a huge argument with them at Thanksgiving. The moon people yeah. did not live in. But this is sort of the first real media hoax and like wow. a big lie. You know, like the big lie that we're dealing with right now. This is the first instance of, instance of that. That's wild. Um, yeah. And by the end of September, news of the lunar discoveries had reached Europe. And one guy writes William Griggs' name. He described the reaction of European newspapers saying, quote, whether they were hoaxed themselves or not, they too well knew the value of the narrative as matters of interest to their readers to expose its American origin, Mm -hmm. even if they were really apprised of it. So in New York, there was a raging debate about this. But then as you get out of New York, people are kind of like, what the hell is this shit? And then by the time it gets to (laughs) Europe... Basically, they knew that their readers would get a huge kick out of how stupid and gullible everybody in America was. Funny. And they were like, awesome, cool. We're going to just publish this paper because you can laugh at like those dumb hick Yankees. And they just <laughs> made money off of it. That's genius. It's like, look how, it, so, look how stupid they are. Yeah. So it keeps spreading. So it goes like to England and then it goes throughout Europe. It's it's really eerie when you keep reading about what people's motivations were uh, and the role of the penny papers because... Uh, the standards are quote unquote different from now. I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> uh, the role of the penny papers and um, their journalistic integrity and the advertising models that they had taken on, uh, and the way they described it over and over, they kept saying um, their stance was, "It's all up to the readers to decide." Is what oh. they all kept saying over and over. They're like, "It's not our job to tell them whether this is real or not. It's just up to you." Oh no. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. That sounds a lot like right now. Yeah. Uh, Essentially, this is... Do your own research. Do your own research. Where? I don't know. I don't know where I'm supposed to go to like the the library and read about like man, bat people 69ing on the moon if that's real. (laughs) Yeah. Fact check. There's no... (laughs) Listen, I watched a YouTube video of a guy in a truck screaming about the moon bat people. So I know it's real. I believe him. Yeah, it's just, it's not good. And and newspapers at that time, particularly the Penny Press. So, okay, let me explain this part. So some argue that Day, remember Day Day is the guy who owned the Sun. Yes. Um, Some argue that he printed the moon hoax in order to embarrass the six cent papers, which were like the more highbrow ones that had advertising and stuff. Oh, interesting. Uh, Hoping that they may try to steal the scoop by reprinting the story without crediting him. That got away from him. That didn't work if that's the case. (laughs) No, as it turned out, none of the six cent papers took the bait and they just reprinted the story and they gave all the credit to the sun. <laughs> they were smart. <laughs> they were like, I don't know. This is what this paper is saying. <laughs> Here, buy our paper so you can see what this paper is saying. Yeah. Wow. Um, but nevertheless, the hoax did dramatize the difference between the conservative six cent papers and the more rambunctious penny papers. Uh, okay. Casting the papers, the penny papers as like, entertaining and salacious and sharp-witted than their rival. So one was sort of like for the people versus like for the elites, so to speak. Oh, yeah. And whether you believe it or not, I mean, I would be way more on board with the penny papers because I'm, it's just, cla- yeah. I'm classist against the rich. <laughs> but also it's like they're giving you the thing that's fun and they're giving you the thing that's right. interesting and they're giving you the thing that's insane. They're not giving you like this dry, you know, fact checked. Right. <laughs> uh, academically supported like paper. No, no, no. Yeah. Moon people. Um, moon people, yeah. What am I going to do, ro- not read about moon people? Right. And for this reason, the hoax proved to be a smart business move on Day's part. But of course, wow. rival newspapers and people who weren't huffing paint were like, are you people <laughs> insane? <laughs> this is clearly a lie. <laughs> so six people did, did, yeah, basically in America like six. that weren't huffing some sort of chemical. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they were like... <laughs> And then, of course, everyone got mad at those people. And they were like, of course, how much is Soros paying you? Like, you're on the payroll. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're part of this. Blah, blah, blah. 
all the same bullshit we deal with today. This is crazy. This is exactly what happens now. Yeah. And people were like, they just didn't want to believe it. (sighs) Yeah. We just don't (laughs) change. We don't change. We don't change. (laughs) That's so scary. (laughs) That's so scary. (sighs) Eventually, someone pieced together that Locke was the writer of this. And they kind of started hassling him about it. And he had to sort of like issue a like a non-denial denial. What? Because he's caught in this weird position where he's like, he wrote this thing that his boss, you know, Benjamin Day, who owns the sun, yeah. is just making money like hand over fist. So if he and comes like, out and he's more. like, oh, yeah, I made this up. Yeah. But if he's like, it, it's all perpetuated by the idea that no one can prove that this, they don't know if it's real or fake. So if he comes out and he's like, yeah, I made it up. All of a sudden, no one's making money. So he's sort of just like, I don't know. Like, he sort of gives like a non answer. (laughs) He can't let he can't let the cat out of the bag. So he's sort of to the day. I think to the day he dies, he doesn't really officially ever go on the record and properly say it. But like there's all these like different hearsay stories of him here or there saying it um, like like at a bar. Yeah, skirting around it. But I don't think there's ever like an official proper like on the record way of saying proof. But it's basically like. (laughs) This guy's from England. He had just gotten hired like a couple of months before. He's the only person that would have been educated enough to work at that newspaper who would have written something like this. And he was a known, you know, he was known for being like kind of anti-religious, like not not into the whole astronomy thing. So everyone's like, yeah, clearly this is the guy. But again, (laughs) who else would it be? Yeah. Who else would it be? Like um, (laughs) an important thing to remember here in terms of the context that there was a lot of civil unrest at that time, especially in New York. Yeah. Because, you know. Jonathan the tortoise was writing op-eds about how everybody should stand by and do nothing during slavery, if you remember correctly. Jonathan the tortoise was born in this year, so don't you dare. (laughs) Don't you dare. I mean, yeah, he he did do nothing about slavery, but later. He (laughs) could have written a paper when he was born. I don't know how quickly turtles, a giant tortoise, develop their brains and to be able to write like a (laughs) op-ed. Jonathan... It's been silent for too long. For too long. At this point, he's not saying anything. But people are writing op-eds. And even at that time, that was a controversial take. And it it really dominated the news cycle. And the general population, they were like, I'm tired of all these protests. They're disrupting my day-to-day. Like, sure, I guess slavery is bad. But all this private property, like, that's what we're talking about here. You can't. Like, you have to. I know you want to protest, and I respect that. But, like, you can't protest. Because that do it, affects me. Do it nicer. <laughs> do it do nicer it in a way that doesn't disrupt anything, basically. Go Everyone's an idiot still. Go over there and be quiet about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Go into the protest zone that doesn't disrupt anything. That's Ugh. what we want it to do. So <laughs> it never the ends. Worst. The worst. <sighs> and so, then later just be like, I was always on that side. Yeah. yeah oh, no, classic. I was on the right side of history. Yeah, classic. So people people were, were super excited to indulge in something that was totally delusional, which is ironic because yeah. it was basically a story about like how like racial hierarchy was prevalent somewhere else in the universe. It was just support- <laughs> supporting what they wanted to believe. They're like, see, right. it's not just us. It's the moon people. They're yeah. right. I'm right. <laughs> Sorry. Go on. Yeah. This is so no, funny. It's, it's, it's so insane, right? And remember, people in New York... And then again, just a little bit of context, like you can yeah. you can get into a discussion about this. People were like they weren't into slavery at this time. Like the people in New York and mm-hmm. the North, they were like against slavery. But it's not like they were like, oh, yeah, black people are people like thumbs up. Like, let's give they them wanted jobs them to like, leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not as simple as being like, yeah. well, they were on the northern and like there is bullshit happening like every mm-hmm. which way. Oh, yeah. Even Lincoln was like, let's make let's make a new country for them called Liberia. Yeah. So there's interesting readings of the moon hoax in different ways. So there's a guy uh, named Kevin Young who wrote about an article for uh, The New Yorker um, that I read, which is very New Yorker-y, which means it's like, Uh again, overly flowerly language and just sort of like, Uh. you know, that's that's their audience. They love it. But uh, I thought that was a good read. It was interesting because he's a black author. So it's it's not something I saw very common amongst all the different uh I guess there's right. books about it, but just not a lot of articles about it. But I thought that was a worthwhile take to to read about it. He's just kind of like, yeah, this is questionable, right? And, and, and to me, this right. is the part of it that becomes interesting because obviously it was written as this, you know, satire. But 
how much of it is and, and then it sort of brings into question like how effective can it how how can an, a satire be effective if it's like too good and people believe right. it and they run into it is it does that become something else so does that mean it's like a failure of a satire also there's no oh, way of knowing yeah. exactly like how much of this was um lock I mean, I mean like maybe he had his own bias and he was writing that shit into it and like i, I don't know it's all right. sort of you won't know without ever get away from him like he just wanted to see how far he could go and then it, right. it just reflected the the views of the time where he you know i mean it's hot yeah was he doing a commentary was he trying to write a satire was he trying to point something out right and and his whole thing was like by Locke's own admission is that he was very like anti-religious or not anti-religious i think he was like against the way that religion had been infiltrated into the sciences and into astronomy so I mean, yeah. the religious aspect of it might have been part of that because that's also part of like whatever the really crazy like conservative religious people would have been at that time. So I, I don't know, honestly, right. like there's no clear answer. It's also hard to guess if maybe we're projecting our own contemporary beliefs about like what we would want this person to have been <laughs> writing about. Like, yeah, they're skewering yeah. all this. To, I, I don't know, honestly, like no one, there's no clear answer about it. But I think it's in, an interesting yeah. way. There's a lot of different ways to read it. I just think it's worth reading all the different ones because it's kind of cool and interesting to see. Well, yeah, I think it's good to like look at it through the lens of, you know, history where even yeah. if he was being sat, sat satirical, he probably still held extremely racist views. And, and it's, yeah, there's, I mean, the, through the lens of race, it's, fa it's fascinating. It's like, yeah, I think so. It, yeah. It's almost like people like, you know, you see it reflected in the movies we make and watch. It's like the, 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 yeah. the, the, the us trying to work through biases through art it's just fascinating that like it was almost like re like reflecting it's our own society onto the moon and then like yeah. trying to figure it out you know yeah um i'll link uh, that story um kay. in the show notes yeah um, I wanna read it's that. worth a read too um That's wild. again just if, it's it's just it's really <laughs> it's, uh, it's such a fascinating like the story itself <laughs> is insane like the context of it's insane, like the story, like the events that happen from it and the interpretations. I loved it. I thought this was such a crazy, yeah. insane thing. Um, but I, we're nearing the end. Go ahead. What were we going to say? Oh, no, I, I just love this. I, I'm excited yeah. to read more. Like this is one of those tabs you do where I'm like, OK, he'll hang up so I can go and uh, <laughs> uh, read more about this. There's a lot to unpack. Anyway. Yeah. So everybody had a take. Everybody had something interesting to say about it. Everybody. But. Our friend, Edgy, Edgy Ali Poe. Oh, Ed, Ed, Eddie, <laughs> Ed, 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 or, uh, Sorry, <laughs> that <okay>. joke flopped. <laughs> it's not a good joke. It's okay. It wasn't. Uh, what did he have to say about it? Edgar Allan Poe suspected his own story idea had been stolen and reworked for the Sun, and he was pissed. Oh, right. Everybody forgot his story, oh. and so he got even. Much like Kendrick, he wrote a diss track called The Great Balloon Hoax. <laughs> <laughs> love that. I love Kendrick, that, that song by Kendrick. Yeah. The Great Balloon Hoax. <laughs> the Great Balloon. He Wait. basically wrote his, his response diss track. And then That's funny. Drake cried. Poe's original story about Hans Fall is considered an influential early example of science fiction. And allegedly, Jules Verne was a fan of both Hans Fall and the Balloon Hoax, and they inspired him to write From the Earth to the Moon and Around the World in 80 Days. Whoa. Yeah, I was going to say, this is really early for like sci-fi stuff. That's what's kind of crazy to me. Like, I thought sci-fi kind of came around in like the 30s and 40s, but this was a whole hundred years before that. Yeah. This wow. is sort of the prototypical thing, and it also tapped into the popular imagination. All kinds of stuff comes from this. But- Lastly, Herschel, the guy who oh, yeah. was allegedly oh, yeah. in the story. <laughs> what did he do about all of this? <laughs> so apparently at first, like a few months later, someone went to South Africa to like, whatever, go work with him on the telescope. And they brought the thing. They brought the story <laughs> and they gave it to him. And he kind of just read it and was like, LOL, where is this going to go? Like he thought it was like cheeky and funny and just sort of like got a kick out oh. of it and was like, ha 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 ha. <laughs> he didn't really like care. He didn't care. That's the best. He just thought it was funny. She's like, initially. <laughs> oh, but oh, then, okay. <laughs> but then like a couple of years later, he just apparently got sick of it because he was like, people keep <laughs> asking me about this and it didn't even happen. <laughs> okay. So he like wrote uh, some formal letter to be like, can you please just denounce this as being fake? Because I am sick and tired of having to tell everybody that this is not a thing, that this... I, I was not a part of this and like it was cheeky and fun at first, but now it's just on my nerves. Wow. Wow. 
That is so funny. I love that he's like, oh, ha, 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 and then completely yeah. loses his mind about it. Because that's yeah. so relatable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've never done that with anything nope. I've ever created. Never. Anyway, let me see. Okay, let me let me see. What else did I send you? Okay, so there's a couple more oh. pieces I want to send you. Let's see. So some of these go to like Italy, for example. There's like an Italian edition where they do all these lithographs and crazy drawings. Whoa, this one's in color. Whoa. Again, I like I how think... all these bat people have gigantic, luxurious beards. They do. There's the flap. Um, There's the flap on the thing's head. The unicorn head. Here's this one. Why don't you, again, describe it to the audience who can't okay, uh, this, see. This... So this looks like... <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> what is going on? Are we on <laughs> Earth or the moon? Oh, we're on this the moon. on the moon. Oh, uh-oh. Are these people tying the... It looks like a bunch of earthlings are now on the moon. Yeah, I think they're thinking about like missionaries coming to the moon or something. I'm not quite sure what this was. This one's a little um, bit unhinged. This one's insane because there's a bunch of... Oh, no. Look down in the bottom left at the tree. Mm -hmm. There's these two bat people being tied to the tree by their necks. Oh, that's not good. I didn't notice that. No, no, that's not good at all. Oh, no, we don't they're like that. They're enslaving the moon people. They're enslaving the moon people. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, but they're also, yeah, this is pretty much just a bunch of like earthlings exploiting the moon and yep. um, enslaving their people. So, you know, nothing changed. Par for the course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, these two moon people are flying away with a lady. They've kidnapped her and everyone's like, hey, bring her back. Wow. This one's fun. It's a drawing of um, a newsy. It just says extra, and it's a giant bat person on the cover. And it's this oh, little tiny this child. This is awesome. Oh, you know what this kind of reminds me of? Is, remember Bat Boy on the, from the... Um, yeah. Was yeah. it Bat Boy? From yeah, the, the National Na Enquirer. Enquirer, yeah. This is like Bat Boy in the, in the 1830s. I, this one of the newsy holding the, the paper is my favorite so far. Oh, there's yeah, another one. Yeah, it's a good one. drawing. Oh, Oh, they're fighting. They're they're beating an, a unicorn up in this one. Oh, I'm uncomfortable. This the way there's these guys. It's are portrayed, very problematic. Yeah, it's again not full good. full warning of uh of to everybody that like it's not. But again, that's no. what we're trying to unpack here is like it's, yeah, the <laughs> art is style very... is great. It's really interesting to look at the art, but then you know, sort of unpack it and you're like, oh, this is not like, great. Uh oh, <laughs> this yeah, is... uh oh. Why they make these choices? Hmm. Yep. Wow. <laughs> There's my wow again. Wow. The wow. Wow. Anyway. Dude, this has been one of my favorite ones you've done. That's my tab. That is awesome. the great moon hoax. Um, <laughs> I will link to the New Yorker article and also to the hoaxes.org. Both are really interesting resources. There's plenty of crazy stuff to read about it. But um, yeah, it's like the that first so good. mass media viral event that has to do with all kinds of weird shit. Anyway, that's my tab. Thank you for that tab. That was like right up Thank my you. alley. My favorite kind yeah. of stuff. 1800s. Sci-fi moon people. <laughs> you ready for something different? Um, yep. That's why we have a podcast. Oh, what? That's why? <laughs> All right. So <laughs> it's just I had something com else com planned for today a couple weeks ago. And then I went to okay. London, as you know. Yes. I went to London for London Comic Con. And mm -hmm. I had already prepped myself like, okay, when you're going to, you're going to go there, but you're not going to go there for fun. You can't go looking around. You can't go, you know, that was immediately thrown out the window once I got yeah. there because I was like, Why? I'm here. Because I, <laughs> Why would you, know, you not go there to have fun? No, I mean, I, no, no. I went to there to have fun, but like, here's how I travel. I go somewhere and I'm like, I have to fill every second of the day because I don't know when I'm coming back. Yeah. Same. Yeah. And so I had a hard time being like, letting go of like, okay, what's, what's around me, you know? So. I decided to screw that. And so I started looking at the map and being like, well, what is around me? Because I was staying in East London. I'd never been to that area before. And so mm -hmm. I open my map and I'm like, let's just look around, you know? Okay. And I spot something that says <laughs> Sainsbury Plague Pit. And I was like, hell yes. <laughs> yes. To go on. This is, uh, now you're speaking my language. And I was Sainsbury like. Sainsbury Plague Pit. Plague Pit. And so, of course, I find myself. Getting onto a train uh, and traveling. Hell yeah, the story keeps getting better. Trains, Kay. love it. Yo, I love trains. I know you do. I love I trains love too. Love them. They're so good. Okay. I hate that we don't have more here. Every time I come back from abroad, I'm like, what is wrong with us? Thoroughly disappointing. So many cars. I hate that. Ah, okay. Anyway, Me too. 
I'm trying not to use this the word a, hate is, because <laughs> my daughter corrects me now. She's like, you can't say hate. And I'm like, this is a uh, fully pro train podcast. Just so everybody yeah. knows. My, my dad right. used to have a uh, bumper sticker on his car that said cars are coffins. And it was like, <laughs> that's was where like, you get it from. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he was like, we should all be tra- on b- bikes or trains, cars or coffins. And he had, he had on his car. It. Anyway, I experienced in real time what my browser would experience with me opening tabs. So I, I find myself <laughs> on a train, <laughs> on a train, looking around. I'm like, oh, I haven't seen that flower before. What, what is it? Let's take a picture of it. Let's, let's look it up. Oh, what's that? Why is this called Canning Town? Let's look it up. Oh, because they used to can things here. Anyway, so I was just on this train <laughs> and like just like. <laughs> I engines. thought you were going to say <laughs> I experienced in real life what my browser would have experienced, which is immediately crashing. <laughs> oh, yo, I crashed. Oh, I crashed. Ready? Okay. So I'm on this train and I get out and I walk to this plague pit and I'm like, I don't know what to expect. And I get there and of course, it's just a cemetery <laughs> and I'm staring at an, like a cemetery. And I was like, so there's where all the plague people are buried, you know? And it was a cemetery. It was closed. I couldn't go in it. So I was like, should I hop the fence? Right. And I was like, no, I'm not 22. So like the last time I hopped a fence to England, I got stuck in, in a castle courtyard and didn't work. Oh. And then before that, I've been stuck in a cemetery before, and I don't want to do that again. So I was like, I can't hop the fence. I'm not 22. This is an insane thing. To, just because I'm here doesn't mean I have to be on it. So I just stared at the plague pit, and all it was okay. was some grass. And then I looked it up, and I was like, are there more plague pits? I realized that London is full of plague pits, which is just <sighs> code for burial grounds or like mass mass graves that they needed because people kept dying. Uh, so I was like, <laughs> I need to work. I need to, to go sit at my booth and work and not think about plague pits. What are you talking about? That is work. That's the beauty of us doing this show is that you going to all the plague pits is fodder for the podcast. <laughs> so I, if you think this tab's about plague pits, I am so sorry because it's oh, not. Okay. Oh, bummer. <laughs> this is all just right. my, no, no, it, it kind of, I'll get to, so I love, I'm looking at this plague pit and I go, I go back to the hotel and I'm like, there's so many more plague pits. So tomorrow after I'm done, I'm going to go to central London and I'm going to go look at some of the other plague pits that are on here. Okay. So seven o'clock rolls around and I'm like plague pits. So I go sit on the ground outside the convention center (laughs) and I start, you know, looking it up and I'm like, how do I get there? Which ones do I go to? (laughs) I, um, (laughs) what? what? Sorry. (laughs) I've done so many conventions with you. So I just know you're sitting there drawing your cat being like, plague pit, 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 plague pit. Like, That's all I can think of. You're just repeating it to yourself over and over for 10 yeah. hours. And you're just and getting you know hyper what? like, plague pit, plague pit, plague pit, plague pit. They have to like hold me back as I as it gets closer to seven. And I'm like going nuts. Uh, and so like I even met like wonderful artists that I could be talking about right now, but I'm not going to. Um <laughs> Shout out. You guys know who you are. <laughs> Sorry I'm so mean about your country. Um, <laughs> I really love it. Okay. So I'm sitting out there and I'm like, there's nowhere to sit. So I'm like sitting there looking up where to go. And I get so wrapped up in it because I notice one of the houses that Stephen Ray Morris talked about. <gasps> One of the fake houses. And I was like, well, there's no way I can't see that, too. So I was like, what plague pits are near Bayswater? And so I started constructing this map. Before I knew it, it was 8 p.m. And I was still sitting outside (laughs) researching plague pits. And the sun was going down. And I was like, you know what? I'm still going to do it just in the dark. And so I... In the dark. I I decided to go... Well, it didn't get dark till like 10 p.m. there because they're so close to like crazy. Anyway... I sound like a madman, but whatever. I'm leaning into it. So I decided to go back to my hotel. I'm like, I'll eat there, and then I'll take the train to the plague pits. I go down a pathway. Turns out that pathway is closed. I walked half a mile for no reason. It, like, broke my, crushed my spirit. I was, like, distracted by geese, and there was, like, this photo shoot with this (laughs) anime character, and I was staring at geese, and I walked through the photo shoot, and then I saw this cool building across the lake, the river, and I was like, that's cool. Where's that from? 935. I looked it up. Couldn't get through to the hotel. I had to walk a whole half a mile back and my spirits were broken and it was like 930. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to the plague pits today. So finally, finally, I'm done working. The next day, I'm like, this is it. I'm going there. And oh, it wasn't until Sunday evening. So I was at the, Mm -hmm. I did the whole convention because I went out to eat with some artist friends, you know, whatever. Uh, Networked, important stuff. Um, 
So I finally got out and I was like, okay, I'm going to go to this one plague pit. It's called Christchurch Gardens and it's down near a train station in central London by Westminster Abbey. Trains and, you know and plagues. I'm not going to go anywhere else. We're just going to this one. And I felt good because I was burdened with all of my tabs. Oh, we're almost there. We're almost to the point. You're I'm like Sisyphus around. carrying these tabs around as you're trying to go to the <laughs> plague pit at the top of the mountain. I opened 16 tabs on plague pits. <laughs> Trying to figure out which ones to go to. Anyway, I'm almost there. Bear with me. I don't want to lose you, please. I'm um, still here. I'm I'm wait. I'm good. on the edge of my seat. Okay, I find go. one and I'm like, I'll go to that one because I wanted to go to Westminster Abbey because I like that place. It's pretty. So I went and looked at Westminster Abbey, and then I'm like, oh, here's a here's the plague pit, and it's just a patch of grass, and um, it, it's like a park now. It's called Christchurch Gardens, and it was named okay. after a church that used to be there, but that was like obliterated during the Blitz. And so now okay. they just cha- turned it into a park, but the bodies are still there. They got rid of the gravestones, but they didn't get rid of the bodies. So this plague pit was an overflow cemetery from St. Margaret's Church nearby. Okay. And they needed to make a bigger cemetery because in 1665, everyone was dying from the plague. And uh, they had to bury everybody. So patch of grass, I start walking around it and I'm like, oh, there's a bunch of people buried here. There's a plaque. It's like, this is a plague pit. And here's where we get to the tab, all right? <laughs> it's not about plague pits because We're it turns out there. plague pits are really sad. <laughs> and so I'm walking around this cemetery park and I look at this plaque and I see something that says Colonel Thomas Blood. And I'm like, who's Thomas Blood? That's a hell of a name. Uh, this is a hell of a guy. And hey, so I'm Tom, to- Tom Blood. I'm Tommy Blood and I'm here to tell Tommy you. Tommy Blood. <laughs> so I was oh, like, yeah, who's well, Thomas I'm Blood? I'm Billy Cripp. What do you think about that? <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> that's ancient true. rivalry I mean, in England. Yeah, that's where it originated. Anyway, yeah, Thomas Blood. Crips. It said this guy's also buried next to the plague pit, and I was like, "Oh no!" So I opened a tab on him, and I, now I'm going to tell you about the jewel thief, Thomas Blood. Yes, he is the first greenlit. and <laughs> the only. No, just wait. You're going to greenlit this so much. So he's the I, only. The name and the uh, occupation immediately. Right? I don't need Thomas, to hear anything else. Thomas Blood is insane. So he was a guy. He was born in 1618 in okay. Ireland. His dad was English. His mom was Irish, and he was okay. firmly on the side of the of the king. So that the rest of mm. Ireland was like mm, boo, and. That's right. Listen, was, Jonathan also didn't speak out against slavery initially, so maybe, and he had a chance to redeem himself. He did. This guy, okay. we'll see. He'll he'll okay. he'll redeem anyway. So I'm gonna I'm going into it with an open mind. Okay, so someday I'll do more things on plague pits, but Thomas Blood took over my entire <laughs> my entire. That's that's how I got here. Okay. Oh, and I never went to that house that Stephen <laughs> showed us. <laughs> anyway. This so, is what it's like, by the way, to hang out with Hannah for 10 hours a day. This is what it's like? It's wonderful. Oh, oh, I immediately took that as a bad thing. <laughs> no, I'm just like, this is how I end up getting through all conventions, because you're just yeah. like out of your mind at some point. We take turns. <laughs> you do take turns. And then you know we what? We take turns going out of a, your mind. a tornado. Yeah, it does. And, it, and it, we're a tornado, the two of us. And bother and everyone around neither us. Neither one of us knows how to stop. <laughs> so it it just fizzles out like either I start crying <laughs> or or you're like or I, I get sent you. away because I have to go eat something because I haven't eaten in like 10 you're hours like, go eat because you're like pasty yeah. and pale and you're like I don't feel good and I'm like maybe you should eat <laughs> so Tommy I'm Blood. gonna get I'm gonna get through this Tommy Blood Irishman so he, when he's 24, the English Civil War breaks out, which mm-hmm. to simplify years and years of long, drawn out, complicated political, religious yeah. battles. Captain Britain's on know, one side and Captain, Iron Man's on the other one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they kiss. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all you have to know is that King Charles I was like, I'd like some more money for war, please. And Parliament was like, no. Money, please. <laughs> Seriously, money, please. And Parliament was like, no. Also, we don't think he should be king. We don't really need a king. And Car- Charles was like, rut row. And then they beheaded him. <laughs> <laughs> and they Take installed- that, Chuck. <laughs> this is the same Chuck in my Anne Hutchison story that was like, Puritans suck. And they were like, boo. Oh, oh so he got decapitated. Anyway, he got decapitated. He got arrested by his own people. Anyway. 
Oliver Cromwell. They installed him as Lord Protector, which was just a different name for a king, pretty right. much. Ollie and, Crom. Uh, he kind of Ollie Cromie. He kind of just like ruined. I, I mean, the, if you bring up Oliver Cromwell in Ireland, you can see the mm-hmm. fire in them. They still hate, they hate him, him for good reason. They well, hate I hate him. him too. I hate this yeah. guy. I don't. I don't know I'm his on deal, the but Irish he sucks. Side. Usually, oh, I am horrible. too. Yeah, I'm always on the side. Yeah, um, I can get into him later. They hate so so he became Lord Protector, and then his son took over after he died. So pretty oh, much just like the king, great. everyone was like, well, "We this love sucks. that." Yeah. So they hated him so much that they went Nepo back baby. to a monarchy. <laughs> so they they were like, "We're what done do you mean with this." Back going- to a monarchy? It's it is a they, monarchy. <laughs> they went back to calling it a monarchy. <laughs> calling it a monarchy, right? Re- rebranded, so I believe, is the term they use right now. They rebranded, and. They hated Oliver Cromwell so much that the royalists dug him up just to hang him again. Uh, oh, I so, think I've heard about that before. Yes, I do. Or you mentioned I've, that to me. I've, I think I've you brought up Cromwell it. before. Yeah. yeah. As he should, you know. So our boy Tommy. <laughs> Double hanging. Okay. Tw- Tommy Blood. 24. He's like, I'm a royalist and a good good Christian. I'm going to go fight next to, I'm going to go fight for Charles the King. And he goes over to England and he's like, yeah, you know, screw you. Oliver Before Cromwell. he's decapitated, right? <laughs> Before he's decapitated. Okay. And then he, he quickly realizes that Charles is not going to win. And he's like, he's like oh, Ugh. oh. And so he quietly just swaps sides and just walks over to the other side. And he's like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> he's all, yeah, screw those guys. Like, <laughs> And Oliver Cromwell was like, oh, you're Irish? That's awesome. Okay, we need your help. You can be a lieutenant. He gives him, he, he's, he makes him a lieutenant. Boomer. And Thomas he just came up off the street and they were like, you can get paid $50 an hour. You can buy a house for $30 and you get to be a lieutenant. <laughs> Tommy Blood. It's so funny that you say that about the house because so they gave, they made him a lieutenant and then they just gave him land. They're like, here, you, you joined nice. our side. Here's some land in Ireland uh, and you can be justice of the peace. So. After the Civil War is over, Tommy and he gets married, has some kids, moves back to Ireland on this land. Little bloods. Little tiny bloods. <laughs> Mini bloods, yeah. Blood D- spots. Tiny, tiny droplets. <laughs> droplets. Uh, I feel insane right now. <laughs> it's okay. good. Lean into it. I'm gonna. I'm going good. to. <laughs> so he goes back to Ireland. And let's fast forward to 1660. This is like 20 okay. something years later. And they're like, Kill, look, let's bring the king back. This sucks. And so they bring back Charles's son, Charles II, and reinstall him on the throne. And it pisses everyone off. Yeah, why? Oh. Why would you? The first king sucked. Why would you bring his kid, his son back? They hate, at least get well, like a different king if you're going to do no, that. No. That would be worse because then there'd be a whole like a war for the throne. So the easiest thing to do is bring back the rightful claimant or else you're going to get more sides being like, well, no, we got to fight for this guy. It's so stupid. It, it goes, you know, I, I wish I could talk more about this, but I wouldn't stop talking. So through all of that, they bring the king's son. And okay. remember how Oliver Cromwell Chuck, gave Chuck land? Chuck II, right? Chuck II. Chuck, Chuck II, II, the sequel, yeah. <laughs> um, so Oliver Cromwell gave all that land yeah. to people. Yeah. Charles II is like, we're going to take that land back. Uh, oh, no. And it completely bankrupted like Thomas Blood bankrupted him and he was pissed for you know understandable reasons so here's where thomas starts his life of insane choices had to take money out of the blood bank sorry i just had to make that terrible joke <laughs> he had to he had to take money out of the blood bank blood bank Am I right yeah so he loses his land he loses his land he's furious and so he rallies a bunch of other cromwellian landowners that were you know, revoked of their land. And he was like, we're going to overthrow the Duke who's in charge of Ireland. Uh, Okay. So this guy's name is Duke Ormond. He's like a royalist English dude who was put in charge of Ireland to keep them under control. In check, yeah. In check. And he lives in Dublin Castle. And so Blood is like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to storm this castle and we're going to, we're going to kidnap him and we're going to kill him. Nice. (laughs) And he gets all these people on board But then I couldn't find out why, but the night before the attack was supposed to happen, they were caught and an Ormond found out. Judas! Someone, something happened, but Blood was like, I'm out of here. And so he like escapes to the Netherlands. And then. Oh, the night before? Yeah, something's, something's fishy. Oh, maybe he, maybe he was just like, oh, I'm a spy working for the other side and I want to get all these people who want to overthrow you arrested. Interesting. Okay. Well, they they were all arrested and executed. Except for him. Except for him and a few others. But 
he got he then became the most wanted man in England because they're like cool. this guy. Okay, we you know, and he swears revenge on the Duke of Ormond because he's like, you killed all my conspirators and friends. I'm gonna kill you someday. Uh, and so he hangs out in Holland for a little bit, and he he's like, ah, uh, I gotta get revenge now. Like antsy, this guy can't <laughs> hold still. Like. Thomas is like, ah, okay, I'm bored. So yeah, he... like, listen, you gotta have a spa day. You gotta relax. <laughs> you can't just go straight into revenge. You gotta take some you time, and focus on you before you go back and try and overthrow the Duke of Dublin. Go, go, Duke of Dublin. <laughs> I like that, Duke of Dublin, Duke of Ormond, whatever that means. So he's like, okay, I gotta get back to England because he hears that the Duke has moved back to England. He does not in okay. Ireland anymore, and he's like, here okay. we go. I'm gonna go kill this dude. And so he. Yes pretends to be a doctor okay this dude feeling it he, ta- he takes on the name of dr Aleph and begins to practice medicine he fully because you could do that you could he opens a doctor's like office and treats people and practices medicine and he's not a doctor so this is like he's- the long con he's just like yes. i gotta set up like at least one or two years of practicing medicine so people believe me a hundred percent and Interesting. he spends the next little while Pretty much stalking the Duke of Ormond and trying to figure out <laughs> trying to figure out his patterns, his little things, what he does right. every day. Uh, and he notices that every night he takes a, a coach ride around his neighborhood in London. Okay. So like horse drawn carriage. To clear his head or whatever. I don't yeah, know. Go Duke, for a Duke night stuff. of he's just like, Oh, killing all these Irish people gets really tiring. I'm I need so to like have tired. the wind. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> the English. You don't know wind the stresses that I have. Yeah. <laughs> Of starving out whole families. It's it's yeah. rough. <laughs> so he he takes this like drive around. And so Thomas is like gets his Cromwellian friends again and he's like, Okay, I found him and here's what we're gonna do. So they intercept this coach one night, drag him out of his coach, tie yes. him up, yes. put him on horseback, and they start riding to Tyburn, In which is Oh okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> they start riding to Tyburn. Where Tyburn is where they hang people, criminals. So they okay. were like vigilante style kidnapping yes. this dude and we're going to execute him. And they pin a piece of paper to him explaining the reason for his capture and why they decided to execute him. Yeah. Don't, don't get too excited. Um, oh. So somehow <laughs> he escapes. So Ormond, oh, like, I know. <laughs> Ormond, like, wriggles free, ends up escaping his, like, servant helps him back and blood thomas blood is so pissed off i would be and he here's the thing though his doctor disguise worked perfectly because nobody knew he was in the country and so when this guy has you know gets kidnapped everyone this guy's son is like oh i think it was this guy and starts pointing fingers at other people (laughs) and like threatening like some poor person got like arrested and like hanged who had like nothing to do with it a different oh. duke. He's like, you a tried to kill duke. him. And if you ever do that again, I'll shoot you dead. I'm like, he was like, anyway. And then all the meanwhile, Thomas is like, Oop, I'm not involved. Yoink. Yeah. So Thomas can't stop. Uh, he's not going to stop there. He kind of gives up on killing Orman for now. Lame. And he Quitter. decides. I know. Well, he decides instead to steal all of the crown jewels from the Tower of London. Okay, I like it. You gotta, he's pivoting. Yeah, he's pivoting. He, I mean, I wish we knew the workings behind his brain, but he decides he's gonna steal all the crown jewels. And here's how he does it. On board, fully. Oh, I'm, I'm oh yeah. Fully on board with this. So only months later, in April mm-hmm. 1671, he starts formula- formulating a plan. And he realizes that the crown jewels can be viewed by anybody if they pay the keeper of the jewels. He decides to dress up as like a vicar, like a church guy, and goes on a tour for the, uh, around the tower with his fake wife. And he has some like female friend named Lost to History, which I would love to know who this was. But she poses as his wife and they go to the tower and they're like walking around like, oh, yeah, we want to see the jewels. And then she pretends to have a stomach ache and she's like, oh. Well, you know, I need Ugh. I need wine. I need spirits. Please help me. The master of the jewels was like, oh, yeah, here, come come to my house. He has an apartment right above the crown jewels. And he's like this 77 year old man <laughs> named Talbot Edwards. And he's put in charge of the jewels anyway. Talbot. 
77 was super old for the time. And they're like, yeah, yeah. you'll do. You can protect these jewels. <laughs> they, the, the wife, Mrs. Edwards, is like, yeah, come in. You can have some things to help your stomach feel better. And they, yeah. they kind of chat a little bit. And then Thomas Blood has to look around. And he's like, well, okay, here's what this looks like. And then they leave. And he comes back three days later to give her, Mrs. Edwards, a gift for taking care of them. Yeah. And they start more conversations and they start to become friends. He starts to befriend. Oh, yeah. He starts to befriend Mr. and Mrs. Edwards to the point where he's like, by the way, I have a nephew uh, who is very eligible for marriage. And you mentioned your daughter needs to marry someone. So Mm -hmm. you want to marry my nephew? Which I don't know why he did this. This just complicates his plan. <laughs> like he's thinking long, 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 long game. Yeah. So he he's trying hires... to disrupt the bloodline. I guess is that the I plan? Don't... I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. He's just trying to get in their good graces. So yeah. like, if we can make an alliance and we could become in-laws of sorts, so I can really infiltrate your. I kind of think he was just crown like, jewels. Maybe he just was like smitten by their family. He was just maybe they were cool, and he was like, actually, listen. He actually ha- likes wh- them. Which one of us have not been like thinking about family? We're in the middle of something. You're like, listen, I'm trying to steal the crown jewels and assassinate yeah. this duke, but it doesn't mean that I'm too busy <laughs> for love <laughs> and and friendship <laughs> and friendship. And and maybe he was just like, I wish I could be part of this family. Yeah, maybe he I just he didn't want that nephew, or did he not really have a nephew? He didn't have a nephew. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. I thought he was really true. Okay. Continue. No. He hired a, somebody to be his nephew. <laughs> Listen, maybe just because he had hired him doesn't mean that he wouldn't be able to have a real relationship and his fake nephew became his real nephew and they bonded. That's where the story will go if it's a film. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This should be a film. So he fires this fake nephew to like come and have dinner with them. And he brings a bunch of his conspirators who are posing as his servants. So this night of the dinner where the nephew comes to meet them is to put them in like, you know, get them drinking, get everybody relaxed. Like we're celebrating an engagement. Okay, so his companions are there and they're carrying swords disguised as canes and they have revolvers in their in their cloaks. So they're they're armed. And during this dinner, while everyone's eating and talking. Uh, Thomas Blood convinces Mr. Edwards, the groundskeeper guy, yeah, to show 77 him year old guy. a 77-year-old dude to show him and his companions the jewels up close. So he was like, can you just like, you know, we don't just, you know, we're Whip friends. Let's go look at them. Yeah, let me see them jewels. <laughs> let me see that scepter. Anyway, they go down to, <laughs> they go down to the jewels, like down below. Right. And him and his companions all go in there. They're like, oh, we're going to get to see them. Look how cool. cool. And... One of his companions shuts the door behind them <gasps> and they put a cloak over Mr. Edwards head and one of them hits him in the head with a mallet. Oh, that's not good. He survives. <laughs> Don't okay, worry. Okay, good. All yeah. Right. Um, I kind of think that he let him survive. Anyway, point is he hits him on the head with a mallet and this guy goes down. You know, he's yeah. 77. You can't. And so they tie him up and, and bind him and then they're like, okay, let's do this. They steal his we keys. They, they open yeah. up the thing and... <laughs> He, Edward's like, there's no way this crown can fit anywhere in, on my person. So he just gets the mallet and he smashes it down flat. Oh! <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. He's like, now that'll fit. He slides it into his like cloak. And he just flattens Whoa. this crown. Whoa. <laughs> <Right? laughs> did not see that coming. No. Well, and then they were like, they did not plan ahead very well. They're like, we only have this little bag. We want to take all of these because we're here. Why not? And so they have to file, you know, the scepter they hold when they're like made king. Yeah. <laughs> they file that down into two pieces <laughs> and like snap it in half and put it in a bag so it'll fit. I was like, this is what it's like to fly somewhere when you're like, oh, I don't want to have to check my bag. Yes. I'm going to crush the royal crown so I can fit it into my carry on. <laughs> uh, and they have to do this super fast because they're like, they're going to wonder where we are. And so then they're like, we have to take the orb. You know, the, when they're getting crowned, they hold that like gold ball in one hand and the scepter in the other. Right, right. It's like called the royal orb or something. And the royal orb, love it, yeah. One guy's just like, this is going in my pants. <laughs> so he, just, <laughs> he puts the orb in his pants. <laughs> and then they all get the rest of it and they all start to leave. And they realize that someone's coming. And they're like, what do we do? And so they all, they're all kind of panicking. And just by complete coincidence, 
Mr. Mm-hmm. Edwards' son was getting home at that exact time from oh. serving in the military abroad. Oh, no. So he had come in on a boat, gotten out, and he walked in right then and was like, what are you he doing? He sees his dad, like, clonked out. He sees the <laughs> yeah. guy with, like, the giant ball in his pants, like, Big bulging smashed pants. up, smashed up crown, <laughs> like, tucked under the arm. Yeah. But for real, he's like, oh, uh, and so he, like, they all start running, and they're like, just go, just get out of here, go find our horses, and the son is like, dad? And the dad ends up, he, like, unties him, Yeah. and the dad's like, starts screaming, treason, murder, the crown is stolen, like, over and over, and every, all the guards in the tower are like, oh, dang, oh, no. so they all, they all end up going out and looking for these people, but remember, Thomas is smart. Thomas yeah. Blood is smart, and he's like, everyone pretend to be freaking out with everybody. So they start being like, oh, there's, a, right, there's right. a person who took the, you know, run, run, someone's, you know, capture, murder. Well, he went that and way. He was, they were they were going to get away, and then that crown slipped straight out of his cloak. Of course. Cloak. <laughs> yep. And they're like, he oh. He flattened it too much. <laughs> he flattened it He's all, it how'd that much. get there? <laughs> oh, that's nothing. <laughs> so... It totally gives him away, and he's intercepted. He is like viciously fighting. He's like he's like fighting these guards, and everybody else just starts throwing the the jewels into the the, the river and stuff like that, yes. trying to like, yeah. And so a lot of people get away, but Thomas does not. And Thomas, oh, no. so Thomas, ever the little turd, is like, I'm not talking to anybody. Like they they chain him up, and he's like, I will only answer to the king. So if you don't bring me to the king, I'm not I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to talk. And they're okay. like, ah, fine. And so they they drag him to the palace because they're like, this guy is insane. <laughs> uh, they drag him to the palace and he's being a huge pain in, pain in the neck. And the king is like, okay, I'll question him. Yeah, sure. And the king the king is like, well, what, why what, why would I let you live? What if I let you live? What, what are you going to do if I let you live? And he's like, uh, I would deserve it. I will kill you. <laughs> so. You know, he like totally sweet talked the king. He was like, mm-hmm. "Hey, look, I was gonna kill you. I saw you taking a bath in the Thames the other day, and I was gonna kill you, but then I decided not to because I was overtaken with your Majesty." Oh, and the king was smart. like, "Oh, oh, he's all girl. You like me? He's <laughs> you all saw flapping me. his hair back. <laughs> yeah, he's all hey. It's funny you say hair because he's Go the on. king that had that gigantic curly wig. <laughs> so, okay, like flapping that like, yeah. He's like, like well." Whoa. You can't argue with facts. Yeah, I am the best. And I have the best hair in the kingdom. And he's um, like, ooh, you watched me bathing? Interesting. Interesting. Come on in. You can stay. No, seriously, though, he pardons him fully. Oh, nice. He He's like, we're not going to arrest him. And everyone's like, what is? what are you talking about? He, like, stole the crown jewels. And he and no one really knows why the king was like your pardon all, but i would have given you the crown jewels and then he opens up his robe <laughs> ta-da and then blood's like i am in way too deep yeah he's like <laughs> oh all right listen he's pretended to be a doctor he's pretended to be like yeah. a random what was it the second thing i forget oh, where a he parson. sneaks in with a per, uh, the the church person what was yeah the parson yeah a vicar okay, yeah. i don't know he can pretend to be someone who's in love with the king if that'll get him his goal. Whatever went down between during the questioning, he was Charles was completely like enamored, uh, enamored like like totally like charmed by this guy because he was like teasing Charles. He's like, you know these yeah. these jewels aren't even worth that much. They're only worth like six thousand pounds. And Charles thought That's that was called hilarious. Negging, right? Is that the term where you're supposed <laughs> yeah. to like, talk down and then like and then bring like p- like yeah? Then you're like, but again. I'm cool. That's exactly what he did. He nagged Charles the second. He read what was it called? The thing that everybody was oh, pickup no. artist. It was the pickup pick artist thing. Artist. Yeah. He he pickup artist Chuck the second. <laughs> Chuck the <laughs> Chuck two. Chuck two got totally pickup artist id by, by Mr. Blood. By Mr. Blood. So he he that could have been the reason. Um, he was really charming. Like he kind of got out of everything his whole life. Mm-hmm. Just charmed his way out. Yeah. And. They also noted that the king tended to have like a weird fondness for witty and quick scoundrels. Like this isn't the mm. first time he's been like impressed with somebody's handiwork. So he's like, oh, you got really far with these jewels. I respect that. Yeah. Some claim that the he also probably, here's here's the thing. He probably was afraid of getting beheaded again like his dad. And these were Cromwellians. And he was like, I don't want to like stoke the fire by killing this dude. 
Mm-hmm. And I see. And, you know, this could possibly end up bad for me, just like my dad. I don't want to die. So I think it was a mix of a bunch of things. But he sure. pardoned him. And this dude just started hanging out at the palace. <laughs> He's just part of it. They're like, listen, this is my homeboy, Tommy Blood. Listen, we used to we used to hate each other, but as the beginning of a great friendship. <laughs> and now we're in love. Now we're thick as thieves and we're in love and we take baths together. <laughs> in the Thames, in the dirty, dirty Thames. So yeah, he starts hanging out around like the castle and the palace. And he kind of just becomes abandoned this, his like, family at this point. He, yeah. All the little I think bloods. He did. Yeah, they're uh, still in the Netherlands being like, when's the, the doctor dad where, gonna come home? <laughs> You know what? I I bet they're happier there. That's true. Uh, the king ends up giving him a house. He's like, "Oh, you need somewhere to live in London." This guy just Here's keeps getting property. <laughs> I know. To be a white man he, in this era, just keep getting wa- houses, no matter <laughs> houses and land, just over and over again. Oh, God. I mean the the fact that he got a house out of this is insane. Like, anyway, so he starts being this, like, personality around London, and everyone's like, oh, there he is, the crown jewel thief, and he'd be like, hey, what's up, guys? Hey, hey! <laughs> and he ends up, like, pissing a bunch of people off because he can't keep his mouth shut and, like, makes fun of a bunch of dukes. Some duke sues him, and he's like, you can't say that about me. <laughs> but somehow Thomas just, like, gets out of it. He-, he still has his house. And then he just, like, dies of old age. <laughs> He's like, eat a dick, Duke. I'm out, bitch. <laughs> eat a dupe, dick. dick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> eat he, a dupe, dick. He totally dick. became like this little like character, and then he died at home. That's the future I foresee for myself. I think that's a just really good. Just talking shit left and right, and then just be like, cool, I'm going to go home and go die on now. Out. Bye. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> and his epitaph, his funeral epitaph read, yeah. here lies the man who boldly hath run through more villainies than England ever knew. And ne'er to any friend he had was true. Here let him then by all unpitied lie, and let's rejoice his time was come to die. <laughs> so this guy sounds like, like Jack Sparrow, basically. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, this is the guy. I mean, we're glad he's dead, but you know. He was a cool guy. He was interesting. Cool. He was fun at parties. <laughs> and then the best part about this is that after they buried him, everyone's yeah. like, how do we know that was him? Oh. Are we sure that was him? And so they go dig him up just no. to make sure that it was actually him. <laughs> and it was him. He's like Andy Kaufman. Uh, yeah. Andy, Andy Kaufman. We don't actually know if he's England. alive or dead. So that's Thomas Blood. And I found Tom where he Blood. was buried. <laughs> I got obsessed with him. And I've opened so many tags. Tabs? Tags. Tabs. Tags. Tags. Tabs. <laughs> so it's all the have same. a stroke? I... It's okay. Tommy yeah, Blood. Yeah, I hope that Thomas Blood... Uh, the one per- he's come the closest to um, stealing the crown jewels of anybody in history. That's awesome. Yeah, That's I mean he certainly <laughs> destroyed them, right? <laughs> if nothing he else, you ruined them. them. That's awesome. I just love the idea of him with a mallet being like, "This isn't gonna fit." This is like a <laughs> Looney Tunes cartoon. Like he's just like, <laughs> bang. and uh, they're like, "Stop, Thomas Blood!" And they drop an anvil on his head, and he's like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Falls Yeah, he goes off a cliff. Uh, yeah. dynamites involved. Oh, yeah. So yeah, my, my adventures in England led me to the awesome. grave of Thomas Blood. There I love is. Thomas Blood's efforts to try to kill a duke and then deciding to destroy <laughs> the crown jewels instead. Um, I also learned that after they were destroyed, the same crown has been like recapitulated multiple times because it keeps could, getting destroyed. That, yeah. How like, old? Do you know how old it is? It's old. Well, in some form or another, this crown has existed for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's still around now, but just in a new form. Yeah. So you're saying that if we go to England, we can pay some 80-year-old guy to go look at the crown jewels. <laughs> Not anymore. They just let you see them now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we Did, have you been to really... the Tower of London? I don't remember. I don't think so. Huh. I've been to London a really... I, last time I was in London was like 2006, maybe? It's Whoa. been a while. Seven? I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send you a picture of Thomas Blood because he is the smuggest looking douchebag. Tom I've Blood. Ever seen. Yep, that seems right. That's there we go. Uh, cool. It just honestly, it kind of looks like me with a with a wig on no, and no beard. Does weird. I do the eyebrow thing. <laughs> Here, let me try. Let me try. Hang out. 
Yeah, just shave my beard and then give me like a wig with like Lloyd Christmas bangs and then like a mullet. <laughs> he does have Lloyd Christmas bangs. Tom Blood. Wow. Tommy Blood. Thank so you. yeah, that's my tab. Uh, and should we do this? Oh no, we got to count down. Yeah, I love it. Um, thank you for that. We made it through the story. That was a good one. I like Tom Blood a lot. Also, I like that I could just say Tom Blood, Sam Whirl. <laughs> Tom Blood. Sam Tommy Blood. Blood. Is a good name. There's Tom actually like Blood. a bo- there's a boxer. I think an Irish boxer who took the name Tom Blood. As his like blood. boxing name or something. Um, okay, what anyway. do we uh, what do we want to do here? Oh, do you want to do? Uh, there's a lot of options so we can do. Mallet, a mallet crushing a bunch mallet. of metal. Clearly, yes. Duh. <laughs> okay, sorry, Alyssa, but uh, if you could get like some crunch, and then maybe the crunching metal, <laughs> and then the things too. Like I want to hear the birds like beep, 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 like flying over their heads. <laughs> so so the, he crushes just the crown, Looney Tunes. So, yeah, L- Looney Tunes crown crushing. Looney yeah. Tunes crown crushing. Okay. <laughs> With a mallet. Okay. With a mallet. You want to count down? Count I don't remember off. who did it okay, last. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, I will. Ready? Oh. Three, two, one. Cl- close it. Cl- we closed it. We closed it. All right, wonderful. Moving on to listener emails. I will go first. All right. Um, our first email is from Sean from someplace Far away. Oh my gosh, Sean did not my tell husband? us. I don't know. It's possible. No, he, he doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> Although Sean does start the email with saying, howdy y'all, which makes no. me think it's like a maybe Texas or something. I don't know. Maybe. I'm stereotyping yeah. here, but most of the people I know from Texas are the ones who would say that. But Kay. Sean, uh, howdy y'all. I've had this tab on my phone opened for a while, and I think this is the perfect way to let it go by sharing the very important subject of why Greek statues all have tiny junk. Oh, yeah, they do. That's tiny. In brief, there was a belief that penis size represented the inverse of a man's intellect, rational thought, oh. and control over his urges. Oh. I'm Big speechless. brain, tiny dick, basically, is what they thought. <laughs> That's so opposite today. Oh, he goes on to say, I like to picture how things would look if this were the standard now. <laughs> Imagine insecure douchebags buying smart cars or tiny <laughs> pistols to compensate for their overly large members. Quote, I swear I'm only two inches. Not like that dork over there. I hear he's rocking a shameful 10 inches. Cue everyone pointing and laughing. Something tangentially related, I think you'll appreciate. My wife is a preschool teacher and the preschool started a program where the teachers had to do activities centered around specific subjects. Okay. One of these subjects was balls, like footballs, <laughs> baseballs, etc. And there was a song for the class to sing to the tune of bingo. B-A-L-L-S, B-A-L-L-S, B-A-L-L-S. And we have lots of balls. (laughs) Sean. (laughs) Keep up the amazing work, Sean. Sean, thank you. Thanks, Sean. (laughs) Um, I will always read an email that has to do with ancient Greek slander. Um, oh yeah, uh, you. If you didn't, you wouldn't. You know, you'd be. I wouldn't be Persian. Your, your exactly ancestors. my Persian roots. So yeah. thank you for that. I like the uh, inverse theory. Also, I like the idea of everybody who buys smart cars because they want to overcompensate for the fact they have gigantic wieners. <laughs> <laughs> to that, you know, that would be a really crazy world. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Right. I feel like Sean would be good in our writers' room if we ever wrote a show that was based on this insane podcast. Is that our end goal? I don't know. I'm just saying right now, I'm like, those are some good ideas right there. there like, I can write a whole ideas. story about a guy with a huge wiener in a tiny car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Email number two is yeah. from Olivia from York, England, which Olivia, this fits in well actress. with them. Hello, uh, Kava and Hannah. I absolutely love the podcast. Thank you. Oh. I have only been listening for about a week, but I have finished all the episodes already. Oh, LOL. my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh Oh, this has to do with... This is awesome. Okay. My tab that I keep coming back to is how Queen Victoria gave hemophilia, a blood disorder, to a bunch of the European monarchs. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about this? She sounds like the real Sam... Or is that, I can call him Sam Blood now. <laughs> the Sam Thomas Blood. Blood. No, Victoria is like kind of... Her blood Victoria disorder Blood. is like yeah. the reason things are all met. Anyway... Well, I bet she goes on to say probably... that. So, uh, such as Spain, Russia, and Germany. Th- this included the heir to the Tsardom during the Russian Revolution in 1917, which led to the rising influence of Rasputin due to his mm. healing abilities. So, like Peter, whatever I think his name is Peter, 
the kid. Yeah, didn't he just always had, tell him to like not it, not take aspirin or something? Or, or something. He, was, like, keep he, the he just no. I remember this. It was like he would always tell him to keep the doctors away while he was gone. Yeah. And that, because they gave him like aspirin that was like a blood thinner, blood thinner. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And so when the doctors wouldn't give it to him, he would feel better. And then they were like, oh, shit, I guess Rasputin's like really smart. Magic. When yeah. really he's just like, don't listen to doctors. Yeah. And it worked out well. Yeah. He's all, don't get vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's the blood 5G. disorder he inherited. Because her, yeah. her, daughter, her daughter married the Russian czar. Victoria uh, Blood. <laughs> yeah. Victoria Blood. Karan I Joel bet feed. you. Tom or Thomas Blood, Tommy Blood was her father, probably. That seems like Some, another avenue that he would have gone to achieve like, his you goals. Know what? I'm going to yeah. impregnate this lady <laughs> and become king I wouldn't the king put it past England. him. No, me neither. No. Nah. Okay, so it has been so prevalent across the continent because of intermarriage, yippee, that it has been, even been nicknamed the royal disease. The royal <laughs> disease. I want to say that I am actively opening more tabs because of this podcast. <laughs> But I'm learning lots, so I think it's a still a self-help podcast, right? I have also informed every one of my friends that pandas have micropenises and shit 40 <laughs> times a day. <laughs> and they drive huge cars. Huge Gigantic cars. Gigantic cars, yeah. Yeah. And they are being su- they are being subjected to as many facts as I can feasibly explain, <laughs> and I hope opening more tabs because of it, too. I can't wait to listen to more episodes. I genuinely love this podcast so much, and it makes me so happy to oh. add to my collection of open tabs Very and sweet. diversify from New York Times connections, which I have opened over and over again. Thank you for so much for making this podcast. All the best, Olivia. That's super nice, Olivia. Wonderful. Thank you, Olivia. Yeah. Also, I do love New York Times connections. That game is really fun. Me too. Do you play that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every day. I prefer do that do one. Wordle? To, although I still do Wordle. I do them all just because I have to do something like to take a little break. And it's like an yeah, easy thing. Yeah. Not easy, but it's like a thing to play. But I prefer connections to Wordle myself. Oh, interesting. I like the crossword. because The crossword's I... fun too. Anything to stay but sharp yeah. when you're our age. <laughs> we are not old. Uh, We're not old. Speak for yourself. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, cool. Thank you. Olivia, that was a wonderful and nice email. Thank you for catching up. Uh, thank you for telling your friends about the podcast. Yeah. Um, if you hopefully it doesn't alienate them, and hopefully they just come listen. So yeah, who knows? Cool. Uh, I'm worried about people from the UK continuing to listen to us after this episode, but them's the ropes. That's how it goes. I don't know how uh, to say. I don't know how to say how much I genuinely love the UK. You do. Uh, yes, I love it. Anyway, go on. You love it. Uh, anyway, if you guys have an email that you'd like to submit to us, please send it to 500opentabs at gmail.com. That's 500. Uh-huh. Let us know uh, something that you learned that's fun. Uh, give us a quick little blurb about it. And don't forget to send the link. Additionally, I thought this might be fun. Uh, we'll, we'll test it and see if anybody is interested in doing this. We thought it might be fun if you want to send like a voice memo. Like if yeah. you want to keep it like under a minute and sort of give us a little blurb. It would be fun to also hear people's voices and um maybe include that on the show if if you're comfortable doing it keep it under a minute yeah um also continue to keep the uh make sure you include the link and all that stuff but we'll see if anybody does it if we're able to make it work but we thought we'd throw it out there um additionally uh as you said at the top of the show we have a patreon that you could submit to um Mm -hmm. please um please give us a chance to grow please tell your friends please support us Please follow us on Instagram. We're at 500 Open Tabs. The Discord link is in the notes. Don't forget 500 Open Roads, which is the yeah. YouTube link also in the notes. Um, and obviously, uh, YouTube. We're on YouTube. Go watch us yeah. on YouTube. Share us on YouTube. You and, get to see um, some pictures and like facial expressions. Yeah. Uh, what else do we want to talk about? You got We got San Diego coming up. We're going to be hearing more yep. and more about it. San Diego Comic Con. If you, I think Saturday tickets are sold out, but they might still be tickets for other days. Uh, yeah, or and then I've just got a... sneak in somehow, like uh, yeah. Tom Blood did. Just be like, I'm a doctor. Yeah. I have to come into San Diego to go see this amazing <laughs> panel that the 500 Open Tabs people are hosting. And do not forget the mallet. That is a huge part of sneaking into somewhere. Uh, we do not endorse bringing weapons into the Comic Con. Just so you know. <laughs> fine, 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 fine. You are no fun. <laughs> I can just see it's getting arrested later. That's fine. <laughs> or me anyway. Uh, continue. Uh, Sorry. Oh, I have a book. Uh, it's going up for pre-sale. It's up for pre-sale right now. Cat People by Hannah Hillam. Get it from wherever. Go check and it out. That's it. Yeah. Go go I pre-order it. I think it's it. good. If I look at I, it, I'll get angry. I don't we'll know. See. I still haven't seen it. I assume that it exists. At least there's yeah, a cover. Yeah. 
there's a cover, cover that's on this it. website that I can't say that it's not like a house of cards, but <laughs> <laughs> look, it's all so I can steal some jewels. Uh, you that's also true. have a bunch of books. Do you have them online? I have many books. Yes, I have all my books. You can get them at blacksmithfilms.com. That is my website where I sell all my stuff. Uh, also, thank you, was... Alyssa. Thank you, Alyssa. You are a wonderful editor. Continue to make us look and sound good, despite uh -huh. the contrary, which is that we do <laughs> <Shut> not. <up. laughs> anyway, that's it, everybody. Come back next week. We'll have more fun yeah. stories for you. And in the meantime, keep it Josie. Keep it Josie. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>